Hello one and all, I'm Jonathan Scarnge, and I will be your narrator today. Today we will be talking about human stem cell differentiation into swan cells. Swan cells are crucial for conducting action potentials throughout the body, which allow for human movement and thought. Differentiation of swan cells from stem cells is a complicated process, and researching the details of it is important for combating neurological diseases such as Parkinson's disease. The first step of this process is gastrulation. Gastrulation is development of the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm from the blastula. On the left, you see the blastula. And moving to the right, you see the development of the ectoderm in blue, the mesoderm in red, and the endoderm in yellow. Neurulation is the next step in the process. Neurulation is the formation of the neural tube and neural crest cells. Ectodermal tissue thickens and flattens to become the neural plate separating the neural plate from the ectoderm. This is seen in the picture as the dark blue in the ectodermal tissue. Cuboidal epithelial cells then begin to lengthen and narrow causing the folds to occur. Neural folds form as parallel ridges along the embryo. The neural folds meet at the midline to form the neural tube and neural crest cells separate from the neural folds. The next step of this process is the formation of precursor cells, which involves neural crest cells migrating and interacting with SOX10 and a transcriptional promoter to form precursor swan cells. SOX10 expression is initiated in the neural crest cells as they dissociate from the neural tube. Expression is then maintained in the neural crest cell migration. SOX10 then binds to the P0 transcriptional promoter, which initiates formation of precursor swan cells. Once the precursor swan cells are formed, the next step in this process is the formation of the immature swan cells. In this process, high levels of receptors interact with the master control gene to express signaling proteins that form immature swan cells. We see here, notch signaling is initiated to maintain high levels of EERB2 receptors in swan cell precursors. The high levels of these receptors enhance NRG1 signaling, or neuroregulin, which is the master control gene in this process. Enhanced neuroregulin interacts with the signaling protein notch to accelerate the formation of immature swan cells. Here you see an immature swan cell which leads us to the next step in this process. The next step of this process is maturation of swan cells, which involves autocrine signaling to keep the swan cells alive during the developmental process, while Wnt, beta-catenine, and extracellular matrix signaling induces radial sorting. The specific autocrine survival factors used in this process is neuroregulin, ETS transcription factors, and Lehman. Then, immature swan cells undergo radial sorting through the interaction of Wnt and beta-catenine and also extracellular matrix signaling. The last step of this process is final differentiation of functional swan cells. This involves signaling pathways and transcriptional factors to induce myelin thickness and ensheathment to produce a fully functioning matured swan cell. The cyclic AMP pathway enhances neuroregulin to increase the cytoplasmic calcium inside the mature swan cell. The increased calcium levels activate calcine neuron and NFAT. NFAT then works with SOX10 to activate CROX20. CROX20 then further increases the amount of neuroregulin inside the mature swan cell. The increased neuroregulin from CROX20 activates the GPCR signaling pathway. This recruits premyelinating oligodendrocytes. The oligodendrocytes ensheath the axon and help thicken it to form the fully functioning swan cell. Thank you for listening along with us on this crazy ride today. That's all, folks, and here are our sources.